Yes, he cares. That's a statement I'm going to make tonight. Yes, he cares. Have you ever questioned God? Have you ever said, where are you, Lord? Kai son, Devla, when I needed you the most, where are you, Lord? And did you ever ask this question? Lord, do you really care about me? If you ever did, you're in good company. I want you to know that tonight. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad if you did because you're in good company. The disciples were with Jesus in a boat and they were in a big storm and they questioned Jesus. The question was, Jesus, do you care? Jesus, do you care that we're in a storm? Jesus, do you care if we're going to drown? Jesus, do you care because they met us? Jesus, do you care because they chayiz? Jesus, you're acting like Kanchi Naituka. You're acting like it's not a big deal. But Jesus, don't you see what's going on? Mark chapter 4 verse 38 says this. Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woken up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Jesus, don't you care that we're going to die? Don't you care that we're going to drown? Don't you see what's going on? And sometimes, maybe you haven't said it with your mouth. Maybe you're the super spiritual tonight and you can say, no, no, I never questioned Jesus. Oh no, I never went to Jesus and said, don't you care because I'm too spiritual. But maybe you didn't say it with your mouth, but maybe this thought was in your mind and maybe this thought was in your heart. Devla Kai son. The woman chose you the most. I chili kaftu. So pip pechonav. I chik chik muchis to chikaras kanchi. You see, sometimes when we're in a trial, when we're in a tribulation, when difficulty comes, when hardship comes. You start questioning if God really cares. Yes, maybe when everything is perfect in your life, maybe when everything is great in your life, maybe when you got a few bucks, and maybe when you're, you're feeling good, and maybe when, when you got no trouble, you got no problem telling everybody, oh, Jesus cares for you, oh, Jesus cares for you. But when trouble comes, hardship comes, difficulty comes in your own life, you start questioning God. Jesus, do you really care? I'm going to make a statement up front tonight. I'm not going to hide it. I'm going to be right up front before we get any further in this message. Jesus cares. Jesus cares. He cares for you very, very much. You are precious to him. He loves you very, very much. His love for you will never run out. Nothing could ever separate you from His love. God has compassion. He has love. He has care. He has grace and mercy for you. Because you are precious to Him. The Son of God became a man. He became flesh and blood. He was born in this earth. He was born in a manger in a barn with some animals. And he lived in this world for 33 years. As a man, he put on flesh and he became one like us. 
Yes, of course, Mechapram, Mechapayah, we all know that Jesus came to reveal to us what God is like. Jesus came to show us who God is. But Asunin so that Jesus also came so that He could know us. Jesus came and became one like me and one like you so that He could know who we are. Please follow along with me tonight. Jesus became one like us so that we can become more like Him. Hallelujah. He became one like us so that we can become more like Him. In John chapter 11, there's a very famous story about a man named Lazarus. I know most of you know the story. He was a close friend of Jesus. And he gets a word. Or Jesus delic warba. Vel varcon ai delic warba ca Cristo ai penene Christos ca ca les cofreno. Les cofreno Lazarus very nas follow po merimos. He's he's very sick and about to die. And Jesus waits four days, four days before he responds. Four days as you could have out, Christ. And sometimes, listen to me, because this is important that you catch this tonight. Sometimes when we go through something and we call out to Jesus, we want Jesus to respond that second. That moment, we want Jesus to respond instantly. But sometimes, Jesus doesn't respond. He doesn't respond when we want Him to. And sometimes when He doesn't respond when we want Him to, we start questioning Him. But listen to me, please. This is important that you catch this. Jesus doesn't work on our time. But Jesus' time is always perfect. Jesus' time is always perfect. So don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. Jesus knows what's best. So finally, Jesus shows up. Pastor Dino Ford, God bless you. Jesus shows up. Arasalo Cristo, Anikolo Foro, Kaisazo Lazarus Mulo. And when he gets to the city, he gets to the town where Lazarus is dead, he gets to the home where Lazarus is dead, he meets Lazarus' two sisters. Elder Mike, God bless you. He meets, he meets his two sisters, Martha and Mary. And in 11, verse 20 and 22, this is the conversation Jesus has with one of the sisters. Tonkan, please. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Hallelujah. Hey, Martha Galica Cristo. She met him as he was coming. Hey, Pendele Christos Cristo. Te avilenas cana cardemtu. Te avilenas cana dem muy petute. Naste chayil muho prao. Para cana wo chayisalo. He's dead. He's gone. But then she makes another statement. She says, But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Thank you, Jesus. That's some truth tonight that you need to put in your heart. Let me just say this tonight. It's never too late for Jesus to turn the situation around. It's never too late for Jesus to step in and turn the situation around. Maybe in the world's eyes, it could never happen. Maybe in your own eyes, it can happen. But not in the eyes of Jesus. Remember something, it's never too late for Jesus, never. And Jesus responds to Martha's words. And look what he says in verses 25 and 26. Please ton kan misto. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will, will live. 
Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Hallelujah. Anyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Oh, Jesus responded to Martha. Martha. O manus kai pachapea ne mande. O manus kai topes ko pachamosa ne mande. Kodo manus ite chayila. Even if this flesh dies, yet he will live forever. The person who believes in me will never die. Hallelujah. What a wonderful promise. What a wonderful promise from Jesus. Listen to me. Even if our life ends in this world, it doesn't mean it's the end of us. Because as born again believers, as children of God, those who put their faith in Jesus Christ, we will live forever. Hallelujah. Jesus told Martha, even if a man dies, but if he believes in me, if he trusts in me, he will live forever. Let me just say this tonight. Listen to me good. No matter how long you live in this world, a hundred years, it means nothing compared to eternity. And I pray in the name of Jesus that all of you live a hundred years old. For all of you. But listen to me. Living a hundred years in this earth. Living a hundred years in this world. is not life. It's not. That's what true life is. Because you can live a hundred years in this earth, but compare that to eternity, it means nothing. It's a drop in an ocean. That is why, this world and everything in it is dying. This world and everything in it is fading. But those who does the will of God, those who make Jesus Christ the Lord of their lives, will live forever. Hallelujah. That's right, Michael. Everything in this life, everything in this world, it is temporary. Here today, gone tomorrow. Mga penaftu menga varaso. Ekshobogo, 50 years old. Ajez Khaisaili, 50 years old. A few days ago, ekaver shobogo, under 30 years old, Khaisaili. Ay Mila, chachez Mila. But as tragic as it is, there's a greater tragedy than dying young, dying without Jesus. Dying without salvation. Dying without making Jesus the Lord of your life. That's a true tragedy. This is why as Christians, this is why as believers, this is why as children of God, we can rejoice. We can rejoice even when this world, even when life ends, we can rejoice because when Christians die, it's not the end. It's the beginning of everlasting eternal life. Let's read on. Verses 33 and 35, Tonkan. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. I hope you're catching this tonight. This verse of scripture, these verses of scripture that I'm reading tonight says so much. It says a lot more than what we're just reading in these few words. Oh, Jesus gonna declare Mary Sadrovelas, a Mary Rovelas, like a manus that were around were crying. The Bible says that he was deeply moved. His spirit, and he was troubled in his heart. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And verse 35, the shortest verse in the Bible, two words, and this is what it says. It says, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. O Cristo, Ruya. When Jesus got to the tomb where, where Lazarus was, and he saw Mary crying, and he saw the people crying, and he saw them weeping. The Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion. He was troubled greatly in his heart. And the Bible says Jesus wept. Jesus cried with tears, 
With a loud voice, he cried. A lot of people have made a lot of comments on why Jesus wept. Some people have said Jesus wept because the people had no faith. Jesus wept because he had to bring Lazarus back from the dead and he didn't want to bring him back from the dead. No, that all sounds good, but it's not true. Let me tell you why Jesus wept. Jesus wept because he was moved. He was troubled. He had compassion. He felt their pain. He felt their sorrow. He saw their tears. Jesus wept because Jesus cares. Jesus cares. Maybe tonight you have cried some tears. Maybe in your difficulty, maybe in your hardship, maybe in your, in your trial, you cried some tears. Maybe and you had some tears. Understand something. You wasn't alone. Jesus feels your pain. Jesus feels your sorrow. Jesus knows what you're going through tonight and what you went through. You were not alone. Jesus knows your pain. He knows your difficulty. He knows your hardship. And He cares for you deeply. These two words says Jesus wept mean so much. It shows us the heart of God. It shows us the heart of Jesus tonight. I can tell you that Jesus cares. You're not alone. You're not alone. Hebrews chapter 4. Verses 14 and 16 takes us a step further. And I need you to hear these words tonight, please, because this is important. You need to hear this tonight. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going through. Brother Larry, God bless you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what pain. I don't know what sorrow you're dealing with. I don't know what hardship you're dealing with tonight. But you need to hear this message tonight. This message is for you. You need to know that Jesus cares about you. But I want you to hear this, please. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 and 16 says this. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. Verse 15 says this, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. A word that we have a great high priest. Our great high priest is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And the Bible says this high priest can sympathize. He can sympathize with our weaknesses. Why could he sympathize with our weaknesses? Because he was one like us. God the Son took on flesh and he became a man. Yes, Jesus is God, but yes, Jesus is also man. He could sympathize with our weaknesses. That means tonight he knows our pain. He knows our sorrow. He knows our hurts. He knows our tears. He knows our suffering. And tonight Jesus knows everything that you're going through. Because he was one like us. One like us. Nobody knows what I'm going through. I got news for you. Jesus knows what you're going through. He knows because he felt everything that you and I feel today. Jesus felt pain. He felt sorrow. He felt abandonment. He felt rejected. He was lied about. He was cursed. He was forsaken. He was hated. He felt everything that you and I feel and every emotion that you and I go through. Jesus, the Son of God, went through it also. That's why He can sympathize with us. He can sympathize. He understands our pain. He understands our sorrow. 
And in verse 16 says this, thank you, Jesus. That's right, he was spit upon also. Verse 16 says this, and you got to catch this tonight. Let us then with confidence, hallelujah, draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Because Jesus knows your pain, because Jesus knows your sorrow, you can now go before the Lord as our great high priest, the one who stands in the gap, the one who intercedes for us. We can now go before the Lord. We can go before the throne of God and cry out to Him and tell Him what we need and tell Him our sorrow and tell Him our pain and tell Him what we're going through in our life. How Jesus was shabli devles komo tolpes katades katati me janab sonakan because I went through the same thing. I know their pain. I know. And that's what. He wept, tells us tonight that Jesus knows. He knows. He knows and He cares. Hallelujah. But understand something, please. Here's the main point of tonight. It's wonderful that He has sympathy. It's wonderful that he has compassion. It's wonderful that he feels our pain, that he feels our sorrow. And I can feel your pain, and I can feel your sorrow, and I can sympathize, and I can cry with you. And I can be a shoulder for you to cry on, and you can be a shoulder for me to cry on. And that's great. But there's not much I can do for you. I can give you my compassion. I can show, I can sympathize with you. But that's all a man can do. But here's the great truth tonight. Yes, Jesus was man. But don't forget tonight, Jesus is also God. 100% God. Hallelujah. He is. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Master of the Universe. He is God. And because He is God, He doesn't only sympathize with our weaknesses, but now we can get help from Him. We can get grace from Him. We can get strength from Him. We can get mercy from Him in our time of need. It's not only He cries for us, but He could also help us. Hallelujah. He could also help us. Because look what happens in the next few verses. Ton Khan. Yeah, he wept at Lazarus' tomb, but I want you to see what he did in the next few verses. Hallelujah. Verse 43 and 44 says this, Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And the dead man came out with his hands and his feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped with head cloth. Jesus told him, Unwrap him and let him go. Hallelujah. Yeah, he had tears because he was man. But he said, Lazarus, come out because he's God. Hallelujah. He said, Lazarus, come forth because he's God. He was a man when Jesus was hungry. And he was God when he fed the 5,000 with two fish and two loaves. He showed us he was man when he slept in the boat. And he showed us he was God when he stood up and he said, Peace, be still. Hallelujah. Only God can do that. He proved to us he was man when he went on the cross and he bled and he died like a man. But hallelujah. He proved that he was God three days later. When he rose from the dead and he defeated death, he defeated sin and he defeated the devil. Hallelujah. And he showed he was a man when he wept at the tomb of Lazarus. But he showed us that he was God when he said, Lazarus, come forth. Tonight, Mugapraum, Mugapea, Jesus cares. And Jesus can help tonight. 
He has compassion and he's got power. Hallelujah. He's got power. He's got might. He's got ability because there's nothing that your Jesus can do tonight. So tonight, whatever your need is tonight, whatever your problem is, whatever your issue is, understand something. Jesus knows and he cares. And Jesus has the ability. Jesus is God and he could turn the situation around. Hallelujah. He could turn the situation around, no matter what it is, because he's all powerful, almighty God. Don't forget that tonight. And I want you to know something tonight, that no matter what your situation is tonight, no matter how dead it might look tonight, Jesus can breathe life into it again. He can give life tonight to your situation. He can give life tonight to your family. He can give life to your body tonight. He could give life to your marriage tonight. He could give life and peace again into your house. He can give life to anything that's dead in your life. He can revive it because that's the power of Jesus. Hallelujah. He can give life tonight. And here's the beautiful part tonight. Here's the here's a here's a beautiful part tonight that I need to share this with you. Yes, Jene Chaisaili. Yes, people died these past few days, these past few weeks, these past few months. Bujene Mule. But those who believe in Christ, those who made Jesus the Lord of their life, one day, the way Jesus came and cried out and said, Lazarus, come forth, is the same day that Swako Manuska Chaisaili, Swako Manuska Mulo, O Manuska Pachalpeano Christo, Shavli Devlesco, one day Jesus is going to come back and shout their name and he will raise them up once again. Hallelujah. He's going to raise them up once again. Because those who believe in Jesus, those who Jesus is the Lord of their life, will never die. They will live forever. God bless you, Pastor David. Yes, they will never die. They will live forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Eternally with Christ. But this promise is only for those, that Jesus is their Lord. This promise is not for the world. It's for only those who make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of their lives. So I pray tonight. I pray tonight that Jesus is the Lord of your life. I pray tonight that Jesus is the Master and Savior of your life. Because if He is, this promise is for you. This promise is for you tonight. You will live forever. Forever. You will live forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus cares. So let him wipe away your tears. Let him give you peace. Let him give you comfort tonight. And I pray tonight in Jesus' name that God will move in your life. He will meet every need in your life tonight in Jesus' name. I pray tonight that his healing will be upon you that His peace will be upon you, that your broken heart will be mended tonight, that your broken life will be mended tonight, that your family will be restored tonight, that sickness and disease will be removed from you. I pray tonight in Jesus' name that the Lord will, will bless you and your family and your finances and provide all of your needs in Jesus' name. Understand something, God is more than able. He's more than able. Because He cares. He cares for you very much. Don't ever forget that. So tonight, I just want to take a moment. I thank the Lord for tonight. And I thank the Lord for all of you tonight. That spend the time. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, I pray your blessing, Devla, upon all that's in the room tonight. Lord, wipe away their tears. Take away their pain, their sorrow. I pray tonight, Devla, that this word, Devla, would touch hearts, would take away Devla's sorrow, give everyone encouragement tonight, Lord. Wipe away their tears, Devla. I daily pacha, daily hodina, Mugodan. Make the janin, Devla, I pray in Jesus' name that tonight, Lord, each and every one of us will know more 
how much you care for us, how much you love us, how much compassion you have for us, how much sympathy you have for us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for having Mila, having care for us, Devla. Thank you, Lord, for having compassion on us, Devla. Thank you, Lord, for sympathizing, Devla, with our weaknesses, knowing, Devla, our sorrows, knowing our pain, knowing our struggles, Devla. Thank you, Mugodan. And we thank you, Lord, because you send us grace. You send us grace. Tonight, Lord, I pray, send your grace, send your mercy, Devla, upon all your people tonight, Mugodan. Strengthen them, Father. In Jesus' name, and meet all of their needs in your life. On Unav Chesavesco Cristo. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I love you. I ask once again, please keep me and my family in prayer as we continue praying for you and your family. I thank the Lord for you. I love you very much. And we will see you tomorrow night.